Ishwar, India remains secular because 80% of India is Hindu. There is no doubt that there is a, a definite attempt to, to denigrate you know, the entire period from 1000 AD. You have been in talks with the RSS and Mr. Bhagwat. Where do the talks stand today? Let me say yes, I don't see uh, much of a change on the ground. The less we speak of uh, uh, Biduri's speech, the better it is for all of us. I mean, it's, it's truly sickening. Hello sir, welcome to the Quintin Quint Hindi and Badi Badi Baate Mein Aapka Swagat Hai. One of the most striking things that I came across was you have played Emperor Akbar in a play not very long ago. What made you do that? How did that happen? Oh, that was just for fun. Uh, I was at a, at a dinner and I met Mr. Aziz Qureshi who started talking about this and said that I'm doing uh, Salim Anarkali as a drama and will you play Akbar? And I was then Vice Chancellor. I said, sure, why not? So long as I don't have to uh, spend too much time you know, outside the university. He said, no, no, uh, we'll do the rehearsals in the, in, the, in the university campus. So I agreed and there you are. Did you have fun do playing Akbar? Oh, great fun. Great fun. Yeah. Rulers like Akbar, Aurangzeb, they find mentions in today's political discourse. But they're remembered differently now. Akbar is not the great for a lot of people now. Aurangzeb, a lot of people we see cases, incidents where uh, people are being jailed or slapped with cases for glorifying Aurangzeb, so to say. Do you think there is an attempt to distort history and paint certain people the way in, differently than before? There is no doubt that there is a, a definite attempt to, to denigrate you know, the entire period from 1000 AD to maybe 1857. And that, I think, is a very naive attempt because this is a phase that can't last. History will remain history. So uh, there, can be, there can be a challenge to Aurangzeb, of course, and there can be debate on his uh, bigotry. Uh, that is a debatable question. But to, to denigrate the entire period uh, is quite naive. And, and also, if you think that you put Aurangzeb on your, on your what, what is it called, um, profile, and you can go to jail, that's very silly. Like history, there is also a lot of uh, communal agenda propagating into films that we see. We have seen uh, what happens with films like the Kerala story. There were organizations, right-wing Hindu organizations, who were running campaigns so that more and more Hindu girls should watch a film like the Kerala story, a film whose facts have so severely been contested, including inside the Supreme Court of India. We also see the filmmakers given to that fear. Do you think there is an attempt to get into the space of art and history in order to further a particular agenda? Let me answer this in a different way. India is an amalgam of various communities and religions. I believe each community, each religion is like a river that flows into this vast ocean that is Mother India. If you try to remove any from this collage, you're hitting Mother India. And that, I think, is very tragic. On the film side, we have seen the history of Indian films has always been extremely, extremely secular. Uh, we have had pictures, which are great hits, the Muslim socials, Shodmi Ka Chan, Mere Mehboob, and, and, a, and a film like Mughal Azam where the language was so uh, sort of uh, difficult. But despite being difficult Urdu, uh, it became the most successful uh, movie of the period. These last few years, it is to my mind very tragic when film actors, when directors uh, would produce and direct films uh, which are uh, meant to convey a particular agenda 
And that is not really the business of cinema. Uh, I think if you want to entertain, you are fair enough. But if you want to entertain at the cost of society, at the cost of harmony, then we will harm, we will harm India. I, let me um, quote to you a couplet. That couplet, by the way, is on a Vaishnav temple in Kashmir, put by Aurangzeb, well, sorry, by Jahangir. Now, the couplet says, heresy to the heretic, religion to the orthodox, but the dust of the rose petal belongs to the heart of the perfume seller. That is the juice and the essence of Indian uh, ethos. So if you think that you can distort it in 15 years, 20 years by, uh, by you know, being jingoistic or being muscular nationalistic, then you're not going to achieve it. It's not going to last. Many of these movements which we see, the VHP or uh, the Bajrang Dal are active participants in that. All these are affiliated with the RSS. You have been in talks with the RSS and Mr. Bhagwat for reconciliatory efforts and Hindu-Muslim unity in the country. Where do the talks stand today and who initiated them in the first place? Uh, Ishwar, I, I will restrict my comments uh, on this because uh, uh, it's an understanding between us and Mr. Bhagwat and his consigliaries uh, that for the moment we will, we will not disclose them uh, to the public. All I can say is that yes, we've been speaking to them and uh, not from now but from uh, 2019. And uh, uh, of course your next question will be that what do you see on the ground? So let me say yes, I don't see uh, much of a change on the ground. but. Uh, the question is that dialogue must happen. Dialogue must continue. I must understand you and you must understand where I am coming from. Yeah. So uh, our effort is to, is to remove misunderstandings uh, which a lot of Hindus have vis-a-vis -vis Muslims and vice versa. Uh, the, there is no doubt that misunderstandings exist between these communities. This is historical baggage that many people carry. Many people are not like you and me who are who can rise uh, above petty differences and think intellectually. I, I think that a lot of us uh, do carry that baggage and uh, only dialogue uh, can remove it. So vis-a-vis uh, -vis my, my talks with, uh, with Mr. Bhagwat and his, uh, and his uh, senior people, let me just put it that uh, we intend to continue this dialogue, but we don't want to uh, disclose its contents uh, at the moment. Do you think there is a particular uh, political effort to further a particular kind of majoritarian agenda vis-a-vis -vis one religion? I, I, think, I think people believe that, that by polarization you can attract a lot of people. So it, it works both ways. I mean, if there is a Muslim party, then they think that polarization helps them get Muslim votes and it works the opposite with the other people. So of course, uh, uh, polarization is being done, at the, but I think it's being done at the cost of uh, of harmony, I think it's being done at the cost of the country's welfare. And um, I, I believe that uh, a true, true nationalistic belief would be to take everyone together rather than segregate them. Do you think dialogue will be able to achieve these things? Because for example, in a state like Maharashtra, we have been seeing, for example, in the past one year, a spate of rallies by right-wing Hindutva groups claiming land jihad, love jihad. There are certain rallies where we see BJP leaders taking active participation. There are, most of these rallies have children in participation, which kind of goes on to tell you how their future is going to be shaped. Yes, it is, it is very painful. It is extremely short-sighted. It gains you nothing. It may gain you one election. But the cost that you will pay eventually will be very heavy. But please understand, countries also very quickly get out of this nationalistic, muscular nationalistic mode. When they see the disadvantages, when they see what's happening, I mean, 10 years down the line, who knows? I don't think that a majority in this country would like disharmony. Ishwar, India remains secular because 80% of India is Hindu. Please, let's all understand that 15, 20, 30 percent people do not make India. Therefore, to make India into a communal uh, cauldron 
is impossible. You will have, uh, you will have uh, riots, you will have disagreements, you will have hit speeches. This is all a phase. There are, there are shall I say, declines and troughs and rises in, in communal politics. Uh, we may be seeing a rise today, but it shall decline. You have been a part of administrative services and governance for a while now. Do you think we are at a point where religion and politics have had the maximum overlap in the, independent, in the history of independent India? I think efforts are make, being made to, to bring in religion into politics and that I think is, is unfortunate. I truly believe, like I said, that religion has to be kept within homes. I study all religions, as you can see there, um, I am reading the Gansahad these days and you can see a copy of the Bible there. Uh, we, we, uh, we must understand the ethos of others. Let me quote to you something which uh, Baba Bulle Shah had said sometime. He talked of Holi and he said, Kelu Holi keh bismillah. Ab ye to bhati ghazab ki baat hai na? Ke khelu Holi keh bismillah. This is Baba Bulle Shah. And that is the ethos of India. That is our ethos. You can't break it. You can try as much as you want. You will have disturbances. I believe that these are momentary. But uh, what about the attempts that are being made from various fronts? Like in the previous days, we did not have as much of active campaigning of these issues. For example, a lot of pages propagating hate speeches on social media, a lot of YouTube channels, WhatsApp videos, etc. How does one counter that from the ground? The interesting thing is, because you mentioned YouTube, is that there are equal number of YouTube channels that are extremely secular. I can name to you half a dozen straight away, which are more popular today than these so-called uh, right-wing channels. So YouTube is a first-class indication of the thinking in this country. Yes, attempts are being made. Senior politicians are making those attempts. When you make expressions like a CBs and you know all that that we heard in the UP election, that's very naive, very silly. I don't understand why you would like to break a country uh, for an election. It, it's just beyond me. Spoke about senior politicians. We had an MP from Delhi, uh, Mr. Ramesh Bidodi, use some very objectionable words for another Muslim MP in the parliament, in the new building. How did that video make you it's feel? It's a shame, isn't it? That's all we can say. I mean, Indian democracy will hang its head in shame. You and I will hang our head in shame. How do we show our face abroad? What do we say? So, the less we speak of uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Biduri's speech, uh, the better it is for all of us. I mean, it's, it's truly sickening. Do you think there should have been a little more action from the party on this front? Of course, there should be. A, there should have been an action. I, I really um, admire Mr. Rajnath Singh. He's, I, I worked with him. Uh, I have great admiration for him. He's a very straightforward man, and he understood that what uh, Mr. Biduri is saying is is, is wrong. But uh, it's it's tragic that uh, that the party should not react more strongly. Speaking about Delhi. Uh... You have been the lieutenant governor. The performance of the Ahmadmi Party government, how has it fared according to you in terms of governance in all these years? I, I, I should not be commenting. It's not fair uh, for me as a former lieutenant governor to be commenting on, uh, on, um, on how uh, Mr. Kejriwal is, uh, is performing currently. He has an agenda, obviously. He's a very clever man. Uh, he's politically very, uh, very agile. And so, uh, but what you see in Delhi is what both you and I see and it's hardly worth commenting. Did the NCT ordinance issue, uh, did it bother you? The way the government brought in the ordinance no, after the Supreme are, Court this, order? This is a very interesting uh, question because most people don't understand why government brought it in. Anybody will say that it is only fair that an elected government should control its civil servants and so on. But the Constitution is very, very clear, Article 234, is very, very clear that Delhi is a union territory 
and uh, the lieutenant governor is the repository of the president's power. That's number one. Now, traditionally, chief ministers, now I'm only talking of postings and transfers because that seems to have become the bane of all this. Postings and transfers were, uh, were done by, uh, by lieutenant governors, but uh, the chief minister would send his recommendations and the lieutenant governor would sit with the chief minister and approve 90% of them. I mean, maybe 10% would be left. Uh, when Mr. Kejriwal became chief minister, he was under the impression that he will control the bureaucracy. My fundamental question of it all is, why this great desire to control the bureaucracy? Why? I mean, the bureaucrats are expected to, to, to work as per the constitution and the law. You are supposed to execute uh, or issue orders that are as per the constitution or the law. And so, what, where does this, why this desire for control? In the ultimate analysis, the old system was first class, which is that the chief minister gives a proposal, the, the governor has a look and agrees to 90-95%. Uh, it, it is only a lack of maturity, I would say, if the two parties disagree to the extent that an ordinance or an act has to be brought through. Did you ever want to join active politics? I don't have the stamina. <laughs> it requires tremendous uh, stamina. Um, it requires uh, money. Uh, it requires uh, family time. And I have uh, far too many other commitments at the moment, always had uh, other commitments to, to give time for politics. What do you wish for India in 2024? My wish is the same as anybody else's, uh, that India should emerge as a strong country. We are on the threshold. We are taking off into being a major power. Uh, we are respected inter internationally. So I wish the economy would grow. I wish the government would be strong. It would be, uh, but my fervent hope would be that it would be an inclusive government that would take all of us along. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for speaking to the Quinton Quint Hindi. And thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye.